Hello everyone. Welcome back to Let's Deal With It. You all bear with me. It's been a long day. <clears throat> and boy, do I understand the word virtue. It just hit me just now, just now, just like that. Virtue is something, you all. And it leaves your body when you press in and pray and even when you fast and you're in the word and you're praying while you're in the word. And it's not that I'm fasting today, but I'm I'm just being hit with some understanding and knowledge. What happens to the human body because it's in a fallen state, it can't con contain the glory of God. It can't. Mm -mm. That's why we got to get new bodies. Amen. That's why when Jesus catches us up, catches us up to meet him in the clouds, we're going to be changed, you all. We're going to this 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 thing here. My God, is it is is not infallible. It's fallible, and um, it cannot withstand the presence of God. Nope, nope. And it just hit me. Virtue, vitality. Yeah, see, that's from my spirit. This is why I'm keep telling you guys about. The spirit and the soul and the body. Mm -mm. We're in a fallen state, you all. And that's why we're going to be given a new body. A body that is just like Jesus's. We can't imagine. I'm going to try and read some scripture, scriptures. You guys see I'm really stumbling because of really honestly being exasperated. <clears throat> But I'm I'm mainly going to just talk about the hour we're in because it's urgent. It's it's urgent, you all. This really is crunch time. Um, the birth pains are intensifying, and you who are mothers, you know what that is to be in labor, and to start out in labor. And it just most women they have a, a time in labor. Not all women just pop go to weasel. The the baby come out. No. <laughs> That's not most women's story. Labor can be a hard, oh, Lord Jesus, mm, mm, mm. tumultuous situation. I'm talking great intensity um, beyond pain. I, labor is not just pain. It's, it's pain is, mm -mm, mm -mm. That's just not a good enough word probably put suffering pain <laughs> well you all we are in great intense uh labor pains yes great intense labor pain there we go horrendous suffering um this is um this is it i know i done said it so many times but you all this is it things are um intensifying greatly uh there's a lot going on and it just keeps you know it, it's like a rubber band like pastor jd farag said now it's where you would stretched and it can't be stretched anymore and it's about to pop that's exactly what's about to happen you all and i love how pastor jd farag says prophecy has an expiration date yeah, it's it's not going to just keep on being talked about the coming of the Lord and never happen. It's, it's, you all, that's impossible. For God to say something, God means it. And when he sends out his word, it never returns void. That's impossible. That's impossible. So I just read in somebody's comment, they said, and when you see... And, when you see the day approaching, see how we can know the day, not the exact day. It means the day is upon us, you all. It's a knowing that that day is nigh at hand. Oh, yes. And I'm here to tell you all that day is, it's, 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 it's closer than the breath that's in our bodies. Do you know that? Yes. Yes. We talking about God. We talking about Yahweh and his son, Yeshua, Hamashiach, and the Raha Kadush. We're talking about the Holy Ghost because that's who's going to take us up. That's the power, the energy. You hear me? That's the spirit in us that's going to take us up, you all. Going to make us fly real high. 
<laughs> you folks out there getting high, you ought to get high off of Christ. You ought to give him a try because um, these drugs ain't going to do it. When this rapture happens, see something just down, not know the Holy Spirit just downloaded. A whole lot of people on drugs going to get sober within seconds. They high going to leave them just like that. It is. And folks who's drunk uh, and, and, and staggering, they're going to straighten up. Because the spirit is greater, you all. It is. The spirit and the soul is everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the Bible says, when you see that day approaching, encourage one another. And that's what many of us have done. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And some of us have been in the face of great trials and afflictions, great trouble. Oh, I, I know I have. I know I have. But oh, hallelujah, it has not stopped me from looking up the joy of the Lord and pressing in. And if you think Yahweh don't honor that, you better think again. You better think again. The devil is a liar because most folks they don't endure uh, sound doctrine. They have turned their back on the Lord. They have drawn back, like the Bible say. He will have no pleasure in the soul. See how important the soul is? That draws back. So you all, um, this is it. This is it. Um, it's reported someone, God bless this young lady, can't remember your name off the bat, but I'll look your name up again or what you, your, your, um, name. Anyway, um, God bless this sister. She said that, uh, the stock market is reporting that it's at a Red Sea. <laughs> Don't you love when heathens and, 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 and sinners use biblical terms? That, that goes to show you they know about God. That's what that show you. Uh, the the uh, blessed sister said that the stock 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 market people said uh, it's at the Red Sea. Ain't that something? Very interesting. Very interesting. Anyway, you all. Uh, then brother Anthony uh, texted me and said that um, government officials have fled uh, Washington D.C. So something is uh, brewing, something is stirring deep in the pot, and it's coming to a head. It's just about to bubble on over. Um, and yet, you don't have pastors preparing their people, uh, bishops, apostles ain't saying nothing. You know, when that Bible says, when you are blind, you are blind indeed. And you know what? I can book it. It says, blind guides leading the blind, they both fall into a ditch. And that ditch is the tribulation. Yep. And many of them are going to be killed. Many of the carnal, Lord, Lord, lukewarm, and once saved, always saved. See, I hear that thing. I cannot stand bugs, y'all. I, oh, oh, I can't stand them. Oh, look at it. Look at one of them stink bugs. Excuse me, y'all. I got to get this thing. Oh, they're just disgusting. I hate insects. Okay, so you all, um, what was I saying? Blessed Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so the pastors are not preparing people uh, their congregation, see, they're their people. They're not God's people. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You is awesome. So what I was saying is this. The Lord, Lord community, the carnal Christians, the lukewarm, and the one saved, always saved. See, this is, this is, the, let me show y'all the gamble that you all done, done took. You can, you can change it any second. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to tell y'all what y'all doing. You're assuming, number one, that you're going up in a rapture. Very dangerous. Number two, when you don't go up in a rapture, you're going to have to have a courage that is out of this world. It's the courage that most beloved saints have in them now through the Holy Spirit. Um, 
a lot of y'all ain't gonna have that courage. Now, some of you all, a, a lot. Now, let me, let me, let me be clear. No, let me take that back. Cause I, okay, Lord, see what it's gonna be like is this. The Lord showed me a lot of rappers and a lot of people who are in the streets gonna have more courage than you all communities that claim the name of Jesus. They gonna be ready to die. They gonna know what happened. And they're going to be ready to die for Jesus because they're not scared now. They're just on the wrong team. They're on the wrong side. And, and they're working for Satan. But they're bold. And they're bad. And they got real courage, but for the wrong things. But anyway, that's why when it says under the altar, he said he's seen all these souls. And he said, who are these under the altar? And the angel said, you know. These are those who came out of the great tribulation. So I believe a lot of people who, excuse me, excuse me, you all, that was told about the Lord and they just, you know, they didn't want to give up their lifestyle, the way they was living. And they said, you know, I don't know about all that. And they're going to remember. They're going to remember. And they're going to, they're going to have the courage to uh, die for their faith in Christ, for to believe on the Lord Jesus and to live for him. And a lot of, like I said, these thugs and rappers, a lot of them done put the rapture in their rap songs. So they know, they know. Whole lot of young black folk know about Jesus and not just black uh, people, but our people know about the Lord and that's why we in trouble because the Bible say once you taste and see that the Lord is good and to him to know to do good and do it not, it is sin and there remains no more sacrifice. So, but they're going to be the generation where the mama and the daddies uh, played with the Lord, went back into the world and their children, they know, like my sons, my oldest son, Thomas, 36 to be, and then like my daughter's age, 26 to be, and then Judah's generation, 14. They they know about the Lord. It's just they've seen a lot of us um, living double lives. I'm going to say it because, see, it's true. And this is why a lot of our youth are confused about Jesus and really don't have no fear of God because the parents didn't. I said it. Mm-hmm. So they let a lot of unclean things in the churches today. Uh, like the homosexual spirit all on the piano, playing the drums, the guitar, whatever instrument, they was all on them. And them spirits got into the people in the congregation and furthermore got into some of the pastors and they became bisexual and gay. Okay? Yes. Oh, I, I don't, I don't want to go there because I, I got a few examples right here in Newcastle. But that's okay, because that's the Lord's business. That's the Lord's business. But I want to show you what have happened to our children. And um, not only that, the world music got into the church music. You know, they start to mix light with darkness. Yes. You know when they say, Mary, Mary, dark child at the end of their uh, gospel music and Yolanda Adams it, I was looking at her in her beginning days with the Lord. You talking about greatly anointed, greatly. And you know who else? Juanita Bynum. Oh, yes. Where's my red pen? Greatly anointed. Fred Hammond, commission. And I said, now what happened? The Lord said, Marsha, you know what happened. The love of money got into all their hearts. I said all their hearts. Uh, Kirk Franklin, he's another one. Donnie McClarkin, these people were anointed. Oh, yes. Yes. And this is why the Lord warned us not to love mammon. And I meant to write out, I think I did. Wait a minute, y'all. I think I wrote out the definition of mammon. It's going to blow your mind. Oh, my goodness. When you listen to what mammon means, 
Oh, I thought I wrote it out, Father. Here it is. I knew I wrote it out. Let me show y'all what then got into the hearts of millions of God's people. Millions. Mammon wealth regarded as an evil influence. Mammon wealth regarded as an evil influence or false object of worship. You Did you hear that? And you wonder why the Bible used the word mammon? I don't wonder. Because it became their God. Yeah. Uh, object of worship and devotion. See, that's why I know that prosperity gospel, nothing but a doctrine. I don't even want to say gospel because they made it a gospel. That prosperity um, doctrine of demons, that's the devil. That's Hasatan. And it says here, worship and devotion. Mammon, an evil influence. Yep, I'm awake. And it's, um, it's mind-blowing. Uh, it's very serious, very dangerous. And um, even Tasha Cobbs, that song, Break Every Chain, that's the one that stands out for me. She got a few of them greatly anointed when she first came out the gate for the Lord. Yeah. And look like to me, look like to me, and I, I'm going to book it because this is not just my opinion, but I begin to ask the Lord, how did this happen, Father? How can you be so anointed and then end up so corrupted? How? Now... The Lord warned us that light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place. And so what has happened to many of our gospel singers, they did st start out singing gospel, singing even uh, scriptures in their songs. Oh, yeah. The whinings. Oh, yes. All of them. I said all of them. Just about. Just about. Um, like that song. Tomorrow, I'll give my life tomorrow. Better give your life today. For tomorrow, very well might be too late. And who said tomorrow would ever come for you? Yeah. Them songs right there used to really scare me. Yo, yes, the fear of God. Now this gospel music, and I'm going to say it, make you want to drop it like it's hot. Yes. Oh, I said it. All of them. Especially Kirk Franklin and Mary Mary. Oh, yes. And um, you all, is it's a dangerous time. It's a serious time. And... The church compromised in such a huge way, <clears throat> number one, when it came to the music. Ain't no doubt about it. When they began to mix and share platforms with the children of darkness, that was a gospel music change. And it's now what's called modern day Christian music, I suppose. It's modern. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. So when you let the devil in, when you, you know, the old saints say, if you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. But I say more than that, he'll take completely over. So the church have greatly compromised. Yep. And I said, well, how did they get the word messed up, God? How did that happen? Now, see, I'm a book everything. Oh, absolutely. When mammon, the spirit of mammon, began to fill the hearts of the pastors and the preachers and the evangelists, you know, like Benny Hinn and the uh, whole heap of them, y'all. He not just the only one. Uh, whole heap of them. Clarence McClinton, uh, Joel, Joel uh, uh, Noel Jones, Joel Olstein. Yeah, yeah. Um, you all, the word began to be compromised 
You guys keep praying for my skin, please. I was feeling so much better earlier. Keep praying for me. Um, uh, what happened is, uh, the Bible says their bellies became their God. And what happened, the spirit of mammon got in their hearts. And they began to get the spirit of covetousness. When one pastor started coming up in the lifestyle of the rich and famous, <laughs> oh my God, like the pastors of L.A., none of that stuff is of God. Don't y'all let them fool you. I said none of that stuff was of God. The Bible said Jesus made no reputation of himself. You know, I once heard a um, well-known sports player, baseball player, he said, uh, the devil will make you famous and rich. He said, but the Lord will, the Lord can make you wealthy. And I'm not knocking wealth. No, you guys know. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But I know what the Bible says about the riches of this world. It'll pierce the soul through. Mm-hmm bring you into many bondages of unclean spirits. That's what the Bible's saying. You know I'm a book it. And when I look at these pastors in the ministries, um, many of them are in sex trafficking, abusing women and children. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, you all. Mm-hmm. And see, that's what the Lord knew. And he warned those who are um, sheepdogs. Um, because that's what a pastor is, a sheepdog. He just supposed to lead the Lord's sheep in the paths of righteousness for Jesus' namesake. Yeah. So you all, this is a time to really press into the Lord. It is. It really is, you all. So I was looking at these rappers and I was looking at NBA young boy, whole heap of them, about a half a dozen or more. And I was looking into their eyes. They're very scared. They know that the world is changing. They know you all. But they have built up this image uh, that the world wanted them to uh, build up. This, I should say, well, the world, the music industry. And they're very afraid. Most of them is nothing but young boys under the age of 23. Yeah, they're just boys. They, they have not been guided by fathers who have the fear of God in their lives and mothers who know the Lord. It's, it's very sad. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. But I know that God takes all these things into consideration. And that's why he showed me they're going to go all out for me in this tribulation. They, they are. They, they definitely are. And now you just got some that's straight up diabolical and wicked. And I know you all know who they are. You know, like your Sean, uh, John Puffy Cone and Jay-Z. Yeah. Diabolical. Sodomites. But you got these young boys that just didn't have any guidance. Godly, fatherly guidance. Bastard children. Most of them. True enough. It's very true. And see, the Lord knows about the fatherless children and, and, and what caused this epidemic. Yeah, the Lord knows all these things, you all. That's why you can't count them out. Because as I've said before, a whole lot of them going to make it before pastors and apostles and bishops and preachers and teachers and evangelists. So this is it, you all. This is it. Um, this is it. I, I really don't want to go into the scriptures because I want to be able to, it, this is so powerful. It's me continuing with Hebrews chapter 10 about why God brought the law through Moses, which was a pointer to our sins to show us that we were sinful uh, human beings. It was a guider and the law itself can never save us. It just showed us our sins. Amen. 
and what the spirit of the letter, which is Jesus Christ did, he died for us to be able to keep his commandments, you all. That's, that's what it is. He died to wash and cleanse us and forgive us of our sins. And he rose from that grave to give us victory over sin, death, hell, and the grave. That, that's, what he, that's what he did for us, you all. And that's why to live, to continue to live in sin, is not going to cut it. Because Jesus didn't die and get up out that grave in vain for us to stay slaves to sin. Mm -mm. He died and rose from the grave so that we can be slaves of righteousness. That's in the Bible. I got all these scriptures. And the Lord was just showing me the law is like a schoolmaster. It, it, it pointed us and, and, and brought light to the darkness of our sinful nature. And um, he gave me some wonderful notes that the law had no holy blood to save man. The law had the had not the Holy Spirit to lead and guide man, which means mankind, you all. The Lord had not, I'm sorry, the law had not the power to change and convert man's mind, heart, spirit, and soul. The law can't do that. There's no power in the law to cause us to be born again. Hallelujah. See, only Jesus can do that in the spirit of God. Okay? So, the law had not the power to change and convert man's mind, heart, spirit, and give us a brand new, uh, brand new spirit. It, it just it doesn't, it wasn't meant for that. Jesus was born for that. Hallelujah. The, the law had not the power of the Holy Spirit to cause man to be born again, to give him a brand new spirit. See how he would re repeat himself? Yeah, he do. He do. And the Bible, God repeats itself twice. Sure do. Sure do. The law could not make man righteous. See that? It took Jesus being born, coming into this world. Yes. Yes. Okay, so the law could not make man righteous and holy unto God. The law could not redeem man. The law could not make man one with his creator and his holy son. <laughs> My God, the law couldn't do that. So, and with his Holy Spirit, amen. Yes, all three. You got to have all three. Because when Jesus died for us, giving us the ability to be born of the spirit, his spirit, our spirit, born brand new, put us back in fellowship with Abba, with our creator, him thereby becoming our Abba, our heavenly father, you all. And see, that's why you should never disrespect what someone believe. But at the same token, you have to show them but we were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. Every human being, every human being was born through the blood of Adam and Eve. And in us is a sin nature, a problem, a serious issue of sin. And no other self-appointed God excuse me, through demon spirits, because that's who they listen to, fallen angels, Lord have mercy. I'm not going to get into all of that, but a lot of religions started through lying angels who presented themselves as angels of light. And the culprit uh, enemy of that is Hasatan, is Satan. He made all the other religions, yes. God never really gave us a religion he gave us an opportunity to have a to have a relationship and a fellowship with him, his son and the Holy Spirit. So it's not that we want to be disrespectful to people who are Muslims, people who believe in Buddha. Um, uh, uh, Lord, there's just so many uh, Buddha, Hare Krishna, Allah. You all, a lot of these gods are made by man's hands and um, people 
they don't have no holy blood to wash and cleanse us 